I ran as fast as I could through the thick cover of grass that reached past my ankles. My unforgiving footsteps threatened to give away my location as I forced my way past the hanging canopy of branches that tried desperately to hinder my progression. I could hear it in the distance, growling and hissing my name in a distorted voice. I had caught a glimpse of the thing before it chased me to the woods. It didn't have a physical body, just a black, gelatinous ball of black mass coated in red boils that twitched with every movement it made. It grew closer, its massive build swallowing up the encompassing shrubs that surrounded us. I was quickly approaching a cliff, its tendrils devouring the forest on each side of me. I was trapped. I took notice in the peripherals of my vision, one of the participants. He was staring blankly at the creature. His eyes filled to the brim with terror. The creature aimed a tentacle right at the man's lower leg, penetrating it with ease. I watched, paralyzed in fear, as the man was hoisted from the ground, made to hang over a gaping hole I assumed was its mouth. I quickly thought on my feet, grabbing a nearby basketball-sized boulder and chucking it at the creature's direction. It growled, deafeningly. I covered my ears as the sound pierced through them microwaving my brain from the inside. Before I knew it, I was lifted off the ground, a sharp pain igniting in my lower thigh. The inside of its mouth was filled with rotating bladed razors, their ear-splitting screeching more deafening than the creature's roar. Come on, come on, come on, wake up! I screamed to myself, the tensioning descent into the monster's gaping mouth made peeing my pants inevitable. In one final attempt to force myself awake, I grabbed hold of my finger, driving it back until I heard an audible pop, followed by a flow of crippling twinge. I was jolted awake from the pain in my finger, crippled even more by the inflaming pain in my right thigh. I had no choice but to ignore it though. I had to act fast. I bolted from my bed to the one of the man from the dream. I shook him violently, frantically trying to free him from the grip of that horrifying nightmare. Eventually, he awoke with a gasp, breathing heavily and sweating profusely. He looked up at me with a gratified expression. Questions boiled on my lips as I desperately wanted to ask him what the hell that thing was. I had never dreamed of it before, so I knew it was his dream, not mine. Morning presented itself as a sliver of dim light barely seeped through the dirt-stained window. Once again, the scientists came with our complimentary breakfast, along with the mystery pills. We all respectively ate the putrid meal and swallowed the pills. One of the lab rats even patched up my finger and leg for me, along with the guy whose name I later learned was Max. Jen was absentmindedly staring at the gushing wound as it was being stitched up. I took the opportunity to write to her once the scientist left. <laughs> Pretty nasty scare, huh? It's a bit more than a scare. How'd you get it? Long story short, I found out how dreams can become reality the hard way. Him too? She motioned her head towards Max, who was face deep in his meal. Mm hmm. Him too. She thought for a moment, her pen hovering above the notepad. You really think the money we'll get for this is even worth what we're going through? Maybe not, 
but the call of student loans in the absence of my full-time job says otherwise for me. The night spent in the inadequately spaced, dimly lit room was disorientating at best. I felt like I was trapped in some zoo-esque cage put on display for a bunch of science nerds. I laid on the bed, staring at the barren, fractured wall above me, then looked over at the people beside me, one male, one female. For the first time in three days, they seemed to be sleeping peacefully. I shut my eyes, slowly drifting into a deep slumber. For a while, my dreams were progressing normally, being reminiscent of those I had after my 12-year-old rehabilitation. The typical Freddy Krueger, Jason Horror mashups I usually got seemed to cease. I even dreamed of marrying Jen. We had two children and lived in one of those upper middle class white picket fence houses you see in magazines. Just when I was enjoying the satisfactions of the married life, I was jolted awake by a blood curdling scream. It was Jen. Standing there, towering over her bed, was Max. He stared down at her with an empty expression, his hands bloodied. A black, smoke-like aura fluttered around him. I took notice of his eyes. They were gouged out, clutched tightly between his fists. I got up from my bed, slowly limping towards him, careful not to alert him of my ever-growing presence. Without warning, he unfurled his lips. Hundreds of those unsightly boils came pouring from his mouth. They darted around the room, sticking to whatever they came in contact with. I dropped to the floor in an attempt to avoid them. Jen hid under the protective barrier of her covers. The black fog that surrounded him became larger, growing into the enormous mass from the dream. I forced my terror-filled body to move, grabbing Jen in the process and huddled close to the door, wrapping the sheet around us both. Through the thin fibers of the blanket, I could see the creature. Its gelatinous girth encompassed Max, swallowing him whole. It grabbed one of the nearby participants, stabbing its tendrils through her body and lowering her into its mouth. Her screams erupted through the air as she was torn to shreds. My panicked breaths stalled by a burning feeling of pure agony. With one final tear of flesh, the black mass vanished, taking Max and the other participant with it. I slowly removed the blanket, hoisting myself and Jen off the cold, grime-streaked floor. The only other remaining participant crawled from under one of the beds and looked at us with utter dismay. The air was gripped by the stench of death. A thick, murky gloom permeated the area. Jen's question ricocheted through my mind as I was beginning to wonder if any of this was really worth it. A dark fog diffused through the atmospheric tension. We sat there in our beds, staring at the thick metal door, waiting for the scientists to burst through. The three of us decided we no longer wanted any part of this twisted experiment and removed our helmets that morning. Charlotte, the only other remaining participant, was more than happy to throw in the towel with us. She described to us her dreams she so desperately wanted to erase. She spoke of beasts the size of skyscrapers and creatures more malodorous than Bigfoot scrotum, monstrosities that transcended the most imaginative of minds. We all agreed it wasn't something we wanted to deal with if that time ever came. Like clockwork, 
the scientists erupted through the door, spouting their peace through snarled lips. I rolled my eyes as Mr. Bad Advice directed his burgeoning aggression towards me. How dare you try to ruin our progression? You were all explained the rules, yet you still disobeyed them. Let me remind you that this is a well-compensated experiment. Do you really want to throw that away? His face was flushed in a deep shade of red, his veins exposed from beneath his skin. Have you been blind this entire experiment? People have died. Does that mean nothing to you? It's all a part of the process. Things like this happen in these situations. I looked at him with a confused expression. Rage ravaged my blood and burned from my lips. How the hell can you be so insensitive? You allowed three people to die, and for what? 30 seconds of fame? This shit's not worth the money. You're gonna have to find three other guinea pigs to beat your bitch, cause we're done. I motioned for the others to follow me out the door. The scientist displayed an inconjurous grin, forcing the feeling of uneasiness to crawl up my spine. Before we made it out of the door, he uttered the words responsible for that crippling grin. Restrain them. We can't afford to have any more volunteers disrupt our advancements. Suddenly, I felt the touch of a cold, burly fist clench my wrist. The girls screamed in fear as they were apprehended. What the hell are you doing? Hatred flowed out of me like an SJW's rant on Tumblr. I warned you, Kyle, not to ruin my advancements. I warned all of you. This discovery could usher in a new millennium. People could finally live out their dreams, distort reality. We could become gods for this discovery. But at what cost? Hundreds, even thousands could lose their lives in this process. Endless tears ran down Jen's face as she spoke, her voice shaky and timid. The scientist, ignoring Jen's pleas, began to speak. Take them to the examine room. Make sure they're given an extra dose of pills. We were thrust into a room more decrepit and feeble than the last. Several chairs aligned adjacent to each other, facing the doorway. The room was littered with medical waste and broken machines. It looked like something straight out of a sci-fi horror film. We were all forced down and strapped into one of the chairs. One of the scientists came in a few seconds later and force-fed us the pills. If you're going to force these on us, at least tell us what they're for. I wasn't too surprised when I didn't receive a response. They left without explanation, shutting the door behind them. Shutting the door behind them. Soon, we were engulfed by the surrounding darkness. We were terrified. We had no idea what they were planning, no annotation of why they were holding us hostage, or what those pills were actually for. We sat completely silent for what seemed like hours. Jen was the first to break the silence. Kyle, we have to get out of here. If we stay any longer, we could all end up dead. I know, I know. I'll try to think up a plan, but for now, there's not much we can do. I glanced over at her terror-stricken expression. Her eyes were darkened, devoid of their essence. I could tell that any hope she had of getting out of here alive had dissipated. She had already given up, and I wasn't too far behind. We were held in the exam room for what felt like months, the encompassing veil of darkness even beginning to display horrific hallucinations, the only shred of light stemming from the scientist's scarce visitations. For a while, we theorized about why we were being held here, coming up with the harebrained reasons to lighten the mood. 
The scientists were aliens and wanted to extract our brains for knowledge. Or they had some weird kink for hostages. For a while, it seemed to work. But eventually, we fell silent. The shroud of emotions was just too strong to deceive. Despite how I felt, I knew I was the only one who could get us out of this mess. So I began to cook up a plan. The straps were beginning to grate at my wrists as I struggled to wiggle them free. Patterns of blood streaked across my arm, created by the tightened straps. I searched around the room, looking for anything to aid in my escape. Anything useful seemed to be just out of reach, until I spotted a syringe lying about four feet away from me. The needle looked sharp enough to puncture through the leather and allow me to rip through. I stretched out my leg, trying to fish for it closer with my foot. I wasn't sure when those scientists would be back, so I had to act fast. After a couple of tries, that yoga class I once took with my ex finally paid off. I was able to slide my foot around the syringe and pull it close enough to reach. I pulled off my boot and sock, cupping my toes over the syringe until I could successfully pull it off the ground. The initial process of sawing through a strap with a needle was harder than I expected, but I eventually managed. I looked over at the girls. Their tranquil demeanor made me almost reluctant to wake them up, but letting them sleep would only complicate things. Hey, hey, Jen, wake up. Her eyes slowly fluttered open. A look of both shock and excitement spanned across her face. Kyle, how'd you- I'll explain later, I stated while quickly unbuckling her restraints. She quickly stood from the chair and wrapped her arms around me. Thank you so much. Her warm tears dripped onto my shirt. No need to thank me. We awoke Charlotte and freed her from her restraints as well. We waited for the scientists to make their daily visit into the room. I gripped the syringe tightly in my hand, standing beside the frame of the door. The girls sat in their chairs, acting as though the restraints were never removed. About an hour later, one of the scientists came in and quickly took notice of my absence. Where is he? Before the girls could answer, I snuck up behind him, forcing the syringe deep into his neck. He squealed in pain and struggled to rip the syringe out. I motioned for Jen and Charlotte to follow me out of the door. We ran as fast as we could, trying to quickly find an exit. Shortly after our escape, an announcement traveled throughout the building. The participants have escaped. Search the building and find them before they make it out. We didn't have much time until they'd find us. Salvation came in the form of an exit sign as we quickly approached one of the doors. To our dismay, three of the scientists appeared from around the corner and blocked the door. Any escape route we could find was quickly compromised by more of them. God damn it! Can't you just let us go? I'm sure you have more than enough research to pad your resume. The scientists just looked at me with an unmistakably demonizing stare. One that made me extremely uncomfortable. His eyes scanned us up and down, and to my surprise, he opened the door, gesturing for us to leave. None of us said a word as we walked out of the door. I looked back at the building as the door was slowly closed, feeling a dark sense of skepticism lolling over me. Should it have been this easy? My quizzical notions were put to rest as Jen wrapped her arms around me once again, thanking me for reviving her lost hope. For a while, everything seemed to be going well. There was no word of the scientists that held us in that room, nor were the nightmares haunting my sleep. Me and Jen even met up from time to time for a couple dates when she wasn't busy with school or work. I even managed to get a job myself. We both kept up with how Charlotte was doing, 
She seemed to be doing well for herself. Everything was progressing nicely until six months later. I decided to do a bit of cleaning in my basement, feeling it to be a bit crowded. While throwing as much junk as I could into a garbage bag, the light suddenly cut out. I froze, looking around the photic room, straining to see through the darkness. My blood ran cold when I saw it. A creature with darkened skin and bright red eyes stood just feet away from me, its teeth similar to hammered nails. Its stomach slowly ripped open, revealing several tentacles that swiveled out of its abdomen. I felt paralyzed by the sight of it, having no choice but to stay frozen in place as it grew closer to me. Its deformed head leaned down to my ear and whispered words that shook me to my very core. In an instant, I knew what all those pills were for. We never escaped. We were still in that room.